Welcome to our latest video on the topic of group 4 elements, electronic arrangements and properties. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to write electron configurations for the first three elements in group 4 and understand why they are classed as p-block elements. You should also be able to understand that group 4 contains non-metals, metals and the metalloid germanium and that the properties of these elements depend heavily on the bonding and structure of these elements. And finally, you should be able to explain the properties of diamond and graphite in terms of their bonding and structure, and be able to explain general trends in properties that exist down group four. Now group four consists of the following elements. It consists of carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead. And the five elements in group four are part of the P block in the periodic table. And this is because their outer electrons are in P orbitals. Each element in group four has a characteristic S2, P2 electron arrangement. And the elements in group four show a trend from non-metals at the top to metals at the bottom. For example, carbon and silicon are non-metals, lead and tin are metals. Germanium is classed as a metalloid because it's a substance which has properties that are in between those of a metal and a non-metal. Group 4 elements have lots of uses. For example, carbon in the form of graphite is used in pencils, it's used to make electrodes in electrolysis, and it's used as a lubricant. Carbon in the form of carbon dioxide is used in fire extinguishers, Silicon is used to make glass when it's in the form of silicon dioxide. Silicon is also used in the semiconductor industry. Germanium is used to make transistors. Tin is used to coat metals to stop them rusting. Tin cans are normally made out of steel but coated with tin to prevent corrosion. Tin is also used in roofing. While lead is used in car batteries, it's also used in paints because it can speed up the drying of paints, and it's also used to make ammunition. Now in other video lessons, we practiced writing electron configurations. Now once again in group 4, it's important that you can write electron configurations for at least the first three members of the group. So in this first practice question, we'd like to have a go now at writing the electron configurations for carbon, silicon and germanium. Pause the video, have a go at these now and then we'll go for the answers. So in this first practice question you're asked to write the electron configurations of the first three members of this group. So carbon is atomic number six which means it has six protons and six electrons so its electron arrangement will be 1s2 2s2, 2p2, and it's classed as a p block element because the last electrons that you put into orbitals go into p orbitals. Now, silicon is atomic number 14, so it means it's got 14 protons, 14 electrons, and its electron arrangement is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2, and silicon is in period 3 because the outer shell is the third shell here. And germanium is atomic number 32, so its electron arrangement will be as follows. It will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And this time you've got to remember that the 4s fills before the 3d, so it's 4s2, then it's 3d10, and then it's 4p2. And germanium is in period 4 because the outer shell is the 4th shell. Now the chemical and physical properties of group 4 depend heavily on the bonding and structures of the elements. Now carbon exists as allotropes, different structural forms. For example, graphite and diamond are both allotropes of carbon. And these have giant molecular structures. Now the properties of graphite and diamond depend heavily on the fact they have these giant molecular structures. Now silicon and germanium also have giant molecular structures similar to that of diamond. 
whilst tin and lead have giant metallic structures consisting of metallic bonding. Now these pictures show the different structures that exist. Now the first picture is out of diamond. Now diamond has a giant covalent structure and each carbon is at the centre of a tetrahedral. And the next picture is graphite where we have a giant structure where the carbons are in layers of hexagons. And the next structure is silicon which has a very similar structure to diamond. And the last picture here is here to represent metallic bonding where we have positive ions surrounded by a sea of electrons and the metallic bond is the attraction between the electrons and the positive ions. And in metals we have these giant metallic structures made up of metallic bonding. Now silicon, germanium and lead exist in only one structural form. However, both carbon and tin exist in more than one structural form. And these structural forms are known as allotropes. Allotropes are different structural forms of the same element. And diamond, graphite and fullerene here are all allotropes of carbon. And because they have different structures, they have different properties. Now we studied these allotropes of carbon at both GCSE and AS level. So in the next section of practice questions, we're going to test your understanding of this. So here's our first practice question on the allotropes of carbon. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first practice question is asking you to look at the structure of graphite and explain why A, it has a high melting point and B, why it can be used as a lubricant. Well, the reason it has a high melting point is because it has a giant covalent structure, one mark if you said that, with strong covalent bonds within the layers of hexagons, one mark if you said that. And for part B, the reason it's used as a lubricant is because there are weak van der Waal forces between the layers, one mark if you said that, and that means the layers can slide over each other, one mark if you said that. So here's our second question on the allotropes of carbon. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. Now in question two, you're asked to explain why graphite can conduct electricity, but diamond cannot. Now in diamond, each carbon has four bonds. So all carbon's outer shell electrons are used in bonding. There are no spare electrons. So if you said that, there's one mark. And in graphite, each carbon has three bonds. So each carbon has a spare electron, which can delocalize over the whole structure, enabling graphite to conduct electricity. If you said that, you get the second mark. So here's our final practice question on diamond and graphite. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So this question is asking you to explain why diamond is a very hard substance. And if you said it's got a giant covalent structure, there's one mark, and if you said it's got strong covalent bonds in all directions, you get the second mark. So now let's look at some trends in physical properties that exist down group four. So the first trend is that the melting and boiling points generally decrease as we descend the group. For example, the melting point of carbon is 3,500 degrees C, Silicon is 1,414 degrees C. Germanium is 938 degrees C. Tin is 232 degrees C. And lead 327 degrees C. So generally the melting points tend to decrease down the group. Now that's not what you might expect because the non-metals are at the top of the group and the metals are at the bottom of the group. And most people think of non-metals having low melting points. 
However, these non-metals have giant covalent structures. In the case of diamond, it has a giant covalent structure with strong bonds in all directions. In the case of graphite, it has a giant covalent structure with strong bonds within the layers of hexagons. Now, although the metals have giant structures, the bonding is not as strong in these metals as it is in these giant covalent structures. For example, the bonding in diamond is very directional. There are strong bonds in all directions and we have to break the majority of these bonds to get the diamond to melt. Now in the case of a metal, the bonding is not as directional and you don't have to break nearly as many bonds to get the metal to melt. So we can think of the bonding in metals as being much weaker than the bonding that exists in these giant covalent structures. Now as we go down the group, the density and conductivity increases. Now it's no surprise that the conductivity increases because we have metals towards the bottom of the group and metals are known for having good conducting properties. Now also as we go down the group, the atomic radii and ionic radii increase. Now the atomic radius is half the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms and it's a measure of the size of the atom and the ionic radius is half the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent ions. Both increase down the group as they do so for every group in the periodic table and this is because as you go down the group there are more filled shells, there's more shielding and there's less pull from the nucleus. Now ionization energy also decreases down the group and this again is down to the fact that as you go down the group there are more filled shells, there's more shielding and there's less pull from the nucleus. Now electronegativity is the ability of an atom within a covalent bond to attract a shared pair of electrons and as we go down group four Electronegativity decreases. However, it doesn't decrease in a linear fashion. It decreases dramatically between carbon and silicon. But after silicon, there is little decrease. And this is because as you go down the group, there are more filled shells, there's more shielding, and there's less pull from the nucleus. However, as we go down the group, once we get past silicon, germanium, tin and lead have lots of d and f orbitals which are not very good shielders of electrons so the shielding quality decreases after silicon and that's why it doesn't decrease in a linear fashion. Now this graphic shows that the atomic radii increases down a group and decreases across a period. And the reason it increases down all the groups in the periodic table is because as you go down the group, there are more filled shells, there's more shielding and less pull from the nucleus. As you go across a period, you are putting more protons in the nucleus without increasing the amount of shielding. So therefore, outer electrons are more tightly held and therefore the atomic radii decreases. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. Here's the first practice question. Read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first practice question is asking to describe the bonding that exists in tin and lead and explain how this bonding enables the elements to conduct electricity. Well, the bonding in tin and lead is metallic, so you needed to say that metals are made up of a giant structure of positive ions, one mark for that, surrounded by a sea of electrons, one mark for that, and the attraction between the two is called a metallic bond, one mark for that. 
Now, the reason metals conduct electricity is all down to the fact that they have this delocalized sea of electrons. So if you mention that the free electrons enable it to conduct electricity, you get the fourth mark. Now, our second practice question comes in three parts. The first two parts are on this slide. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at the first two parts of this question, and then we'll look at the next part of this question. So now have a go at part B of this question, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we go through parts A and B. So the first two parts of question two are asking you to define the terms atomic and ionic radii. Well, the atomic radii is half the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms, one mark if you said that, and the ionic radii is half the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent ions, one mark for that. Now question 2b is asking you to explain why both the atomic and ionic radii increase down group 4. This is a two mark question. So if you said there are more filled shells down group 4, which means more shielding, you get one mark. And if you said this means less pull from the nucleus, you get the second mark. So here's our third practice question. Once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So question three is asking you to explain why ionization energy decreases down group four, and it's a two mark question. So once again, you need to say that there are more filled shells as you go down group four, which means more shielding, one mark for that. And therefore this leads to less pull from the nucleus, one mark for that. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question 4a asks you to define the term electronegativity, and it's a one mark question. So electronegativity is the ability of an atom within a covalent bond to attract a shared pair of electrons. If you said that, you get one mark. For part B, you're asked to explain why it decreases dramatically between carbon and silicon, and why there is little decrease after this. This is a three mark question. So silicon has an extra filled shell to carbon. So there's more shielding and less pull from the nucleus. So if you said that you get one mark. Now, as you go down group four, there are more filled shells. However, the quality of shielding is not as good. So if you mention that you get the second mark. And this is due to the fact that D and F orbitals are poor shielders of electrons. And if you said that, you get the final mark. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to write electron configurations for the first three elements in group four and understand why they are classed as P-block elements. You should also be able to understand that group four contains non-metals, metals, and the metalloid germanium and that the properties of these elements depend heavily on the bonding and structure of these elements and finally you should be able to explain the properties of diamond and graphite in terms of their bonding and structure and be able to explain general trends in properties that exist on group four so that concludes this video lesson so please check out our youtube channel dr o chemistry which has lots of gcse as and a-level videos and our Twitter site, at Radicemistry.